Jacob Burns here from Burnsy Disc Golf and today we're going to be doing an in the bag for the 2023 disc golf season. One quick note before we start today's video is that I'd like to preface that these discs are not going to stay the same probably throughout the season. I like to switch things around like my putters, like some mids and fairways quite a bit throughout the season depending on weather and it's just kind of a course to course thing and they're not going to stay the same. But for right now, this is what I'm bagging. All right, first discs in the bag, we have putting putters. Uh, I'm putting with two different types of putting putters. Since it's a bit of a warmer day, I actually should have brought my Flex 3 Glow D-Line Rainmakers, but typically in warmer days, I'll putt with those because they're stiffer and feel better in the hand when it's warmer out. And then I have, right now, these Flex 2 D-Line P2s. These are typically my colder putters, my less stiff, gummier putters, or softer putters and I mean P2's Rainmakers they just come out of my hand really good and I love the plastics that Discmania has come up with and really consistent for me really good feel and they're not leaving the bag anytime soon next up we have my four throwing putters for the least stable we have a soft exo link this is my turnover putter my hyzer flip or my really touchy straight shot putter uh, typically I can bag a lot of different types. I just really like baseline stuff for that turnover disc just because it's the most consistent. Whereas a premium plastic, I want to go either straight or overstable, which yeah, this is just kind of the slot or this is kind of the disc I like in the slot and the link feels really good for me and I will flick it sometimes, but mostly it's a backhand straight shot. Next up, we have that little bit of stability, but pretty straight uh, Sky God 4 in the premium uh, putter slot, I guess. Uh, not a forehand disc, very, very good backhand, whether it's straight, I could put it flat, I could put it on Heiser, put it on Anheuser, it'll hold the line no matter how I want it, and just really consistent for me, really glidey. Uh, love the Sky God 4. And then my final throwing putters, I have Glow Z Zone and a ESP Zone. Uh, the ESP one being a bit straighter and the Glow Z one being a bit more stable. Typically, these are my forehand and backhand overstable discs. Uh, typically, I don't throw them in a ton of hyzers. Like, if I need to just chip one up, it's going to be this disc more than likely. Whereas, if I need to pump something straighter and have a bit of fade, it's going to be the ESP one. Uh, typically, really consistent for me. I love the zone, whether there's like the Razor Claw 3 or the Toro or just any over or ov any overstable, really torque resistant disc. I like to go with the zone. It just feels really good for me. And yeah, those are my throwing putters. Next up, we have mid-ranges. Currently, I am only bagging three mid-ranges, all in premium plastics. All right, first mid-range in the bag, I have a Glow Metal Flake C-Line MD3 in the Iron Samurai 2. This has been probably the most used disc in my bag of all time. It is super flippy, like touchy, mid-range, flip over. Uh, hyzer flip to turnover with a lot of power or just dead straight if I want to throw it soft It is just the most consistent mold most consistent disc for me And I don't think it's gonna come out of the bag anytime soon unless if I break it in half or something uh, Love the gummy feel of it. Just super consistent for me and yeah, probably my favorite mid-range of all time Glow metal flake sorry not glow sea lion metal flake MD1 in the mind bender. Uh, just dead straight, pure to any line you want to throw it on. If you throw it on Anheuser, it's going to hold that. If you throw it flat, it's going to hold that. If you throw it Heiser, it's going to hold that. But typically, if you throw it with a lot of power, it's going to flip up or turn. Uh, just super consistent disc and probably one of my favorite mids I've ever thrown. And it just has that really consistent out of the box feel and flight to it. And I, I just love the consistency of the mind bender. And then finally, for my straight to decently overstable mid, uh, the Iron Samurai 4. The reason I bag this disc is probably not for the straight shot necessarily. If I pump it flat, it'll go straight and have a little bit of fade. But typically, I throw this on hyzer almost all the time. This just has a consistent fade to it. It's nice and stable, has a lot of glide, just like the other mids. And um, yeah, really like it. Iron Samurai 4. Next up in my bag, I have the fairway drivers. 
currently I am bagging seven fairway drivers. Uh, typically a fairway driver for me is anything from seven to about 10 speed or six to about 10 speed. Uh, I don't bag any 10 speeds right now and I also don't bag any six speeds, but typically I'm not opposed to throwing them if they feel good in the hand. All right, let's get started with the most understable. We have a Neo Essence. The Neo Essence is just a hyzer flip to extreme turn or flat to roller, just super understable. Uh, probably my favorite roller disc, really good mold, uh, really good beginner disc as well. Uh, I absolutely love the Essence. Next up, I have two FBs, uh, both being C line or S line. This one being a really old beat in S line FD, and then this one being a new, brand new S line FD. They have similar flights to them, but this one definitely takes the cake for being more understable. Uh, this one I've been using for about three years now, beating it in to absolute perfection. It's a hyzer flip, or hyzer flip to dead straight fairway for me, just stupid consistent. Whereas this is my hyzer flip to like baby hyzer flip to turnover or flat to turnover fairway driver. And yeah, they just complement each other really well and I love having them both in the bag. The FD being the mid-range of fairway drivers, it just holds any line you want it to. Uh, with a lot of power, you can get it to flip up and turn a little bit. But yeah, just super consistent mold, as I've been saying with a lot of these, and uh, really consistent flight for me, and I'd recommend this disc to any, about anyone. But yeah, S-Line FD. After that, we have two ESP Athenas. Uh, the difference between these two discs, uh, even though they're different runs, this being the prototype and this being just a stock ESP one, uh, this one's board flat, this one's a little bit domey, <laughs> this one's 160 grams, this one's 174 grams. Uh, I want to beat this in to be the hyzer flip to just straight with a tiny bit of uh, fade at the end. I want this to be kind of like an FD but have a bit of fade. Uh, that's why this is in the bag. And then this being kind of the notch above the FD. I can put it flat, I can put it on Anheuser, I can put it Heiser. It'll just go dead straight and then have fade at the end. Typically why I like the Athena, T-Birds, T-Bird 3s, it's just really, I love the molds of them. 7502s being one of my favorite, just like usually the molds are really good and I like the feel of them. But yeah, the ESP Athena being one of my favorite uh, kind of overstable fairway drivers right now. And then speaking of overstability, we have two C-Line FE3s. This one being really old and really beat in and from the end of a factory, whereas this one, this new C-Line one, being from the brand new Discmania factory. And the difference between these, obviously, besides wear and tear, is that this one is just absolutely board flat, has no glide, and this one glides and also has a little bit of turn to it now that I've beat the crap out of it. Uh, yeah, this one's super stable, or super overstable, and it's typically my Anheuser, my Spike Heisers, my grenades even. I will pretty much forehand every single fa or fairway driver in my bag, but uh, yeah, FD3 is super overstable and just probably never coming out of the bag. They just feel so good in the hand. Backhand and forehand, just most consistent overstable disc I could, I could ever dream of. But yeah, FD3s. All right, here we are, onto the final discs in my bag. We have my seven wide rim distance drivers. To start with the most understable, we have a really beat-in Old Star Wraith. Uh, this is a nice forehand disc. I typically don't forehand a lot of distance drivers. I haven't got enough power on my forehand yet. I don't really know my forehand capabilities. So this type of understability is really good for my forehand and it's really good for rollers as well or extreme hyzer flip turnovers. So uh, thank you James and thank you Star Wraith for being super reliable in my bag. Next up is a kind of, not like a replacement, but it fills almost the same slot as that Star Wraith, is a Horizon DD1 from Discmania. But it's just super glidey, super domey whereas that one is flat and is just my workable forehand disc. This I will throw on a forehand, but it's typically my backhand hyzer flip turnover, extreme hyzer flip distance, uh, woods touch 
backhand shots. It just, it's super workable. I love the DD1. And uh, thank you for being so similar to a Wraith. You fly so well. And I cannot wait for these to be released in a stock fashion because I might be bagging more than just one of these at that point. But yeah, Horizon DD1. On to the four big boys. These are my favorite distance drivers in the S line or I guess C line sometimes, but same mold, DD3s. I pretty much have been bagging DD3s since I started playing disc golf. I just love the feel of them. The plastic has always turned out really well and I'm really happy with what Discmania has been manufacturing recently in their own factories in the plastics that they have. All right, to start off with the most understable DD3, we have the brand new S-Line ones. These things are just absolute crushers. Like, they're so flippy. They just have a, a, they have a good amount of dome to them, and this one in particular is definitely gonna be probably my furthest flying disc in my bag. It's extreme hyzer flip to turn over, to fade back, or if I throw it flat, I could roll it. Uh, I don't see myself rolling it too often, but yeah. S-Line DD3, we have, well, I guess I could put these in the same category, but they don't fly the same, uh, Cloudbreaker 3s. They're both DD3s. Uh, this one has the hyzer flip to a little bit flip potential and goes a lot further than this one. This one, this light grade Cloudbreaker 3 is just an absolute beefcake. And I could see myself bagging this for another 10 years and it not flying straight. It is just stupid overstable. But the one thing with DD3s is that they're super glidey and can go super far. So this is typically my like my flat release disc, whereas this is my Anheuser to if I want a spike hyzer or something to fight the wind. Uh, yeah, they all have their uses, but these two kind of complement each other and feel just amazing in the hand. But yeah, Clawbreaker 3s. One disc I just got back after recording this video is this Chargers DD3 from the X Out run of the Clawbreaker 2s. And I'm happy to have this disc back. It's my favorite disc in my bag. Thank you so much for getting it back, Steven. On to my final disc of the bag. We have a Sea line PD2. Uh, if I ever feel like there's a wind, because there is winds out there that do flip that light gray uh, Cloudbreaker 3, I will reach to this PD2. It is not a forehand disc, kind of like all the rest of the DD3s. I will not forehand it. <laughs> it's just really overstable. It's my beefcake. Uh, I can throw it on Anheuser, I know it'll fade. I can throw it as hard as I want to into a headwind. It's not gonna turn. It is just stupid stable. So uh, yeah, Beefcake PD2 in the bag. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video of my in the bag. Uh, hopefully I get to work on making more videos. It's been pretty crappy weather recently, so I haven't really been out to film, as well as super windy, and I don't have a microphone strapped to my chest, so it's kind of hard for me to get good audio quality. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one, hopefully. Bye-bye.